Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sam Robbins. Now, today I want to discuss five brain-damaging neurotoxins that are found in popular foods. In fact, foods that I actually used to eat. Plus, I'll also give you healthy alternatives. And this is a really important topic for anyone who wants to increase your energy levels, all right? And improve your memory and cognition, especially as we get older. Also, your mood and um, especially if you're really concerned about Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease like I am due to a family history, actually on both sides of my family. Now, as a reminder, neurotoxins are substances that can actually harm your central nervous system, your CNS. And as a reminder, your CNS controls most functions in your body and mind. It's basically your brain and spinal column. Listen, simply stated, when these neurotoxins get into your body and attack your CNS, they negatively affect how you feel and the functions, right? This includes all of your senses, your sight, your sound, your smell, taste, and touch, and so forth, your organs, all right, and your stomach, your digestion, you know, your 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 kidney and liver and so forth. Also, your your muscle movements and strength. This is why I mentioned earlier your energy levels and of course your emotions, your mood, your memory, cognition, sleep, and so forth. Obviously, this is a really big deal. More so, it's a massive problem because the FDA allows over 3,000 food additives to actually be used in our food supply and relatively few of them have ever been tested for safety. Now, they barely know what these additives do when used by themselves. And they most certainly do not know what they do when they're used together. There's just too many of them, right? Unfortunately, a handful of these food additives are actually well-documented neurotoxins, but are still found in popular foods most people eat daily and even in relatively healthy diets. And that's what I'm going to get started with today. Okay, so the very first neurotoxin is aspartame, which is an artificial sweetener. And this is a big problem of me in the past. Aspartame is obviously, if you didn't know, a very popular artificial sweetener, especially over a decade ago. And it's found in most things labeled sugar-free or diet. And it's typically found in like diet sodas, candies, chewing gum, and so forth. You know, a lot of these stuff, unfortunately, that kids eat. Okay. Now the brand name is Equal or NutraSweet. And again, it goes by aspartame. And sadly, I again used to use this in, you know, in a lot of this junk over 20 years ago. Now there are over a hundred reported side effects of aspartame, including migraines, dizziness, anxiety, memory loss, insomnia, and the worsening of many disorders ranging from fibromyalgia to Alzheimer's disease. In fact, there are over 7,000 aspartame side effects reported to the FDA between 1982 to 1995 and a lot more since then. And again, they still allow it in our foods. And you can also find a list of the reported side effects on various reputable websites uh, such as cancer.org and the CDC. So make sure you read the label, all right, and avoid this artificial sweetener. In fact, avoid them all except for one of my favorite uh, artificial sweeteners. It's not actually artificial one. It's called stevia, which is actually natural. And it's an herbal extract. And stevia has been used safely in Japan for a few decades before actually even showing up in the U.S. It's actually 200 times sweeter than sugar and doesn't even increase your blood sugar or promote tooth decay. So it's definitely something you want to look into as a natural alternative to aspartame. Now, the second neurotoxin is monosodium glutamate, also known as MSG. And this is something I found out almost 30 years ago. And it's a big one, not even for the neurotoxin reasons that I stopped. Basically, this is acts like salt and it's found in many packaged foods that you eat. Also, when eating out, right? The saltier the food, the higher the MSG typically. And they used to use it heavily in Chinese foods when you ate out or even at home. Now, MSG is very addictive, all right? And it actually causes you to gain weight. But I'll get to that in a minute. This is the main reason I stopped using it. Many times, MSG is found in foods like canned soups, salty snacks, um, you know, ramen noodles, uh, processed meats, and refined soy products. Also, in many spices, broths, and bland flavorings. All right. Now, unfortunately, the label does not have to even say contains MSG, and that's the big problem. Many times, it's using the words such as natural flavoring. Again, read the package. This allows uh, the companies to use MSG without actually stating it on the label. Again, thanks to the FDA. Now, here's some label-listed ingredients that 
always contain MSG, but doesn't even have to uh, label it. Hydrolyzed uh, vegetable protein, uh, plant protein, and just hydrolyzed plants, I mean proteins in general, plant protein extract, all right, calcium caseinate, sodium caseinate, yeast extracts, and also texture protein, a lot of these uh, fake ingredients. MSG has been uh, has many negative mental and physical side effects. However, one that most people don't know about is it has a negative nutrient portioning effect. Basically, this means that when you eat foods with MSG, the food quickly converts much faster to body fat than it instead of being used for energy and actually building muscle and so forth. So you can basically eat the same amount of calories, right? But you'll get fatter because of this artificial salt. Plus, it increases your appetite and has that addictive quality to it. And this is why food manufacturers actually put it into our foods, into many of these snacking products. And this is one reason it's so hard to stop, you know, eating a bag of, you know, a bag of chips or something similar. All right. Unfortunately, all we can do is just read the label and do our best to avoid packaged foods, especially those that I mentioned earlier with those ingredients. And also make sure you read the labels. All right, so there's three more, and I'll go through these quicker. Now, neurotoxin number three is dicethyl, and this is actually um, in popcorn. Now, home uh, popped microwave popcorn contains this butter flavoring with an additive called dicetyl. And you won't see the word dicetyl on the label. This is a big problem. If you see artificial butter flavor, quote unquote, or natural flavors, assume that the product contains this neurotoxin. Now, dicetyl causes much harm to the brain by crossing the protective filter called the blood brain, brain barrier. You actually don't want to cross this, but you do. And this is something you don't want. And one of the common negative effects is Alzheimer's. So the solution to eating popcorn is just make it at home, right? Using an air popper. All right, neurotoxin number four is mercury. Now, I'll be honest with you, in recent years, I've been much more concerned about mercury poisoning because I've been eating a lot more fish, right? And every time I go out and eat sushi, it really becomes a problem in my brain. Unfortunately, many fish have high levels of mercury due to the environmental pollutants in the air and the water. This includes one of my favorite fish, which is tuna, which I completely now avoid. You also want to avoid swordfish and orange roughy. Now, mercury, again, can... Uh, also cross that blood-brain barrier, which you don't want, and therefore it accumulates in the brain. You can't get rid of it, which can cause mercury poisoning. Now, the first signs of uh, mercury toxicity includes memory loss, depression, anxiety, mood swings, numbness, and tremors. Now, fatty fish are low in mercury, and the best are wild-caught Alaskan salmon, which is what I have, herring, mackerel, and sardines. Now, these fish are also high in that really healthy omega-3 fats. And finally, neurotoxin number five, aluminum. All right, this is one you also want to avoid and because there's 50 years of proof that it can actually lead to Alzheimer's. Unfortunately, aluminum is very common. Now, it's used as an additive in baking powder and also anti-caking agents. However, the most common is found in your drinking water, right? The tap water antacid, you know, such as those Tums and so forth, and deodorant, antiperspirant, which is why I stopped using that stuff a long time ago. You don't want to take the antiperspirant. You want to take regular deodorant. So again, what I suggest is drinking filtered water and using, again, regular deodorant, not the antiperspirant. Again, if you can't, even with the deodorant, don't put it on, you know, at night. If you take a shower at night, just put it on when as needed. And of course, it's also readily seen in aluminum foil, right? Uh, aluminum cans and the cookware. So instead, Use cooking sheets instead of the aluminum foil when possible, glass bottles and containers. All right, so the bottom line in summary here is basically neurotoxins are chemicals known to be harmful to the brain directly and therefore to your body indirectly. And the end result is, again, what I've mentioned, poor memory, cognitive problems, brain fog, all right, poor sleep, uh, which is I've had it, mood disturbances, fatigue, and lots of brain and mental illnesses such as anxiety, depression, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's, again, just to name a few. And again, I actually bring this up mainly due to the fact that I have a family history of both on both my parents for some of these problems, especially Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Heck, listen, when I got in my 40s, my memory energy really started to get worse. And now that I'm almost 50 years old, this is a big worry of myself, you know, for me. And maybe something you're concerned about as well. If so, if you're looking for a proven solution or something natural for improving your energy levels, right, dramatically improving your memory and cognition, 
maybe help reduce and even avoid brain il illnesses such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, uh, go ahead and click the link below this video and try a formula that I've been using for over a decade to help with all of these issues. You'll definitely feel and, and perform much better. So there you have it for today. I hope this video gave you some clarity and it was helpful and something for you to think about. Please share the help with a friend. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and do me a favor and please leave your comments below and let me know what you liked or learned with today's video. As always, thanks for listening and have a happy and healthy day.